All right, so the backyard is kind of getting there. Still have a lot of work to do. It's not come along too bad. That corner and that side by the fence has all been cleaned up and taken care of as far as all the leaves go. That corner has been taken care of on the other side of the light pole. That's the monster right there that I have to go in uh, underneath that tree by the fence and clean all the leaves and crap out of there and get the landscaping done still. That corner has been taken care of. We pruned up, I believe that's an evergreen. That tree I got from a bank when I was 12 years old when I opened up a savings account we pruned it up a little bit so we can open up the bottom of it and not get poked in the eye when I cut the grass and that corner still needs a little bit of work but otherwise it's getting there it's not too bad come out into the sun and my rose bush is really coming along very nicely exception of one spot I gotta trim out some branches but uh, Got some blooms on it. Not bad. Well, before I started doing the work outside, looked out the window and saw this guy sitting there. Ain't he beautiful? God, I love the way the eyes look on this thing. Must have been a mouse or something over there. <laughs> Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. You're looking at my Dean Shire Semi Hollow Electric Guitar. This has got a lot of cool features in it. Some you guys may like and some you may not like. Uh, one of them is having a piazzo pickup, which in this case it's in the bridge. And not a lot of people really care for that. That and also having dual input or outputs on it. One stereo and one mono. Now for different things that I was fooling around with, with uh, settings, clean tones, the piazzo sounds pretty good with delay and then having a lot of uh, reverb added to it. It's got kind of a nice sound to it. But the switching on this thing is kind of funky. Now you have your humbucker pickups. All right, this has a split. So you pull out the tone and now you split the pickups. You got your three-way switch. And then you have another three-way switch over here, which is for the piezo pickup. Now, plugged into the regular mono output jack, if you try to use this switch, it doesn't really function very well at all. Uh, actually, when you turn it down, it basically cuts out these pickups and it, I think it wants to try to be the piazza but it's really on the dim side I want to crack this thing open and see if there's anything going on with because I noticed that the output jack was loose for that so I want to make sure that there's no wires twisted or anything else uh, when you have it plugged into the stereo well now you have your piazza pickup and your humbucker pickups uh, you can either have it single you have them both and Switching it upwards, I really don't get the third setting. I haven't really quite figured it out yet, but it's just kind of kind of strange. Um, volume, volume, tone. So this thing needs some help pretty bad. 
I bought this thing probably about a year ago and it's been hanging on the wall ever since I really have done nothing I haven't done anything to it basically it said I've got guitars that uh, I haven't even shown you guys yet or have done any type of a well maybe you've seen an unboxing of it but I haven't done any type of a uh, setup or anything and this one needs a setup the action height on this thing is pretty bad I mean you're looking at on the 12th fret you're looking at uh, Oh, 332s on the high or low E and you're looking at 564s on the high E and this thing has like next to no relief in it at all which that's got to change as well so I was playing around with it just you know goofing around not really doing much of anything just to see how it feels now with the action height this high and the neck being as straight as it is uh, you won't have any problems with you know fretting out or fret buzzing and stuff like that on the guitar itself if I drop this action height to where I want it to be I might have a problem where I'm going to end up starting to fret out or having a lot of fret buzz as it is right now the way it stands at the first fret it actually feels pretty good as far as the action height goes uh, but I know when I add some relief to this thing and drop this down that might change just a little bit at over at there now I hate to pick guards I don't know why some guitars have a pick guard on it but in this case here having the black knobs the black hardware on it with the uh, pickup rings well not really the black hardware but the black pickup rings it kind of goes pretty good in having the black headstock the only thing I don't like is is this kind of like it's not loose but just feels like it's bouncing off the body of the guitar so again like I said this is a semi hollow and as you can see inside there a little bit uh, one of the things they really didn't do was hide the wires too well and uh, yeah there's also a cover plate on here which I doubt it is going to be a I really doubt it's going to be any type of a battery inside of here or anything else so the first thing I want to do is get the strings off this thing all right so I got the strings off of this thing and now what I want to do is check out the straightness of the neck now I believe this neck is going to be in the minus a little bit because of the fact that well it was pretty straight with the string tension on there so removing the string tension it's going to give a little bit of a backbone so the first thing I want to do is grab this guy this is a nice little tool and I'm going to zero this out Put, I don't want to put any weight on there or put any pressure on it, but I do want to zero it out. It looks like it was already zeroed, so that's going to give me what I'm looking for as far as checking out this neck. So I'm going to put this on the neck. Make sure it's on top of the frets. Now you are going to have to put a little pressure on this thing or hold it in place because it will... The spring on that pin is pretty tight, so if I give this a little bit of, yeah, I am a minus, minus five. So that explains why the guitar was pretty much, neck was pretty straight with the string tension on there. Now it's got a little bit of a back bow, so I don't know if you can see that or not, but let's see here. Maybe if I put a little light on there, okay, will that work? Let's see here there you go oh, I got the light all right so now it's saying a minus six minus five so it's right in between there all right let's get that fixed all right so what I'm going to do is pretty simple eyeball the gauge and turn this thing till I get out of that minus and into zero close. Now I am I'm zeroed out. That works out. This thing works out really nice. This is a great tool. I kind of like it better than using the uh, straight edge with the notches in it for the frets. 
Now what I want to do is kind of check to see how these frets are. These frets are not in bad shape. They can use a little bit of a polishing. I can see somebody tried to polish it and got some crap up against the fretboard and the fret itself and a little bit in the cracks. That's why you should cover up your fretboard if you're going to polish your frets. That way you don't get this shit in the grain. I'm going to check to see if there's any rocking going on here, if there's any frets that are maybe not seated right or have a little bit of problem where they're high or low and it seems like a little bit right there so I'm going to put this over here just to mark that area My fret uh, hammer. And instead of doing a total fret job on it, all I gotta do is just kind of tap that back into place and she's good. Sometimes with expansion and contraction, these guys can kind of raise themselves up a little bit. This one here. And that does the trick without having to do a complete fret job. That puppy right there. feels much better that's it so neck is straight frets feel good the edges of the frets are not bad at all I don't have to do any type of uh, dressing on the sides of them because they feel real nice they're not grabbing any skin and uh, they actually look like somebody did something to them a little bit around the edges. They're not as sharp as what they usually would be from the factory. So I've already taken the back cover off of this thing and I already checked out the output jack and yeah this puppy is loose. It doesn't look like there's anything touching and I don't want to twist anything from where it sits naturally. So what I want to do is I just want to tighten that up actually tighten both of them up. Uh, is it a 10 or an 11? Well, maybe a 12. Let's see. Yeah, it's a 12. So I just want to tighten these guys up without twisting or disturbing the way that they're sitting naturally. That one's already tight. So there's a little wire over here. I gotta move that. That oh, that wire is kind of. Get my glasses because I need to see what that wire looks like. No, it looks all right. Doesn't look bad. Okay, decent soldering job. Not bad on this thing at all. And everything looks like it's where it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to be. And I could put this back in and screw it back in place. And this does have push and pull, so these pickups do have a. These pickups are what a three wire. There is a plug in here. It looks like they are a three wire. All right, so I could put that back into place. I don't need to play around with that. I fixed what needed to be fixed. And that's it. This guitar I picked up used, but it's like in brand new condition. And for what I got it for, uh, and what these go for new. Now I looked up 
the guitar a little bit to see any some find out some information, especially with the electronics on there, the three way switch. And the ones that I found uh don't have the push and pull for the uh to split the humbucker. This one does. And it doesn't look like it is something that was put in later just by the way things look inside here. It looks like it was looks like it was in there. You know, it came from the factory. The body condition this thing is uh I wouldn't say completely, completely perfect, perfect, but it is damn near close to it. There is not a mark. There are some smudges on here that I can take care of, might be fingerprints, but as far as any chips cracking or scratches, this is in really good condition, really great. I think after I polish it a little bit, give it a little bit of a uh, wax on there, polish it up, it should probably be an A. The Grover tuners on this thing look a little bit smaller than what I normally would buy, especially for like a Les Paul, but they work really good. They're really smooth. There's no play in the gearing of them. Forward and backward seems to be responsive pretty damn nice. Alright, so that's taken care of. I don't need to be in there. And I think I screwed up when I said something about the output jack. So you have a stereo. It says magnetic. Then you have mono. And it basically puts everything in mono. And that's also for the Piazza. So I think I got mixed up when I said something about the, uh, the output jack earlier. All right, so that is taken care of. Now I'm going to work on this fretboard. So I want to polish up these frets a little bit. I also want to remove, try to get this crap that is inside here out. So let me see. A small driller screwdriver. So I don't want to scratch the fretboard and I don't want to scratch the the fret and see if I can get inside there to try to loosen that up a little bit. Yeah, it's going to have to be wiped down. It's a rosewood fretboard, so nothing a little lemon oil is not going to take care of. So this I could put off to the side. I don't really need that anymore. Action height gauge I don't need. My rocker I could put away. Move some stuff off to the side over here so I don't get things mixed up. Now, what I wish they would have done with the truss rod cover is matched it with the, what is this, a one, two, three, it's a four ply pick guard. And you know, they should have matched it up with this a little bit so the edges would have been the same. I gotta see what kind of material that I have. If I have a three ply pick guard in black, uh, that I can, I got some spare parts that I use for cutting up and I make my own truss rod covers and stuff. Um, I'll replace that with, I'll cut the same shape out, drill out the holes the same place, bevel the edge so it has the same edge as a, this four ply does. That'll make it look a little bit better at the headstock. I want to check these guys out and make sure that these tuners are, I believe those are a 10, yeah, those are a 10. Make sure those tuners are good. They're not tight snug, but enough to where they're not going to loosen up on me later on. And they got a little bit of, turn them just a little bit. Snug them up just a little bit more. And I'll go be, uh, behind them and make sure that the screw that is on these guys has not backed out any a little bit either and you can get like a little bit of a squeak on them as far as the turn goes just make sure these guys are nice and snug there's a little bit of a smudge over here probably it looks like maybe there was a sticker over here at one time somebody didn't get it out now there's a serial number on this thing and I want to say this is a uh, I'm gonna to have to look up the serial number to see what this is because it's a J J180105 72 which I want to think these things didn't come out until like 
what, 2017, I think. I'm not sure. All right, so I want to address this fretboard, and that'll be next. So as you guys know, I've been kind of on a little bit of a t-shirt kick. So I had my first set of shirts made up, and they're a little bit on the expensive side, but I started going through Vistaprint, and uh, they're more affordable as far as a t-shirt goes than uh, the first set that I had made up. And I'm waiting for the shirt to arrive here. It'll be here sometime next week. That way I can check the quality of the print and, uh, you know, make it available for you guys. So this is another design that I came up with, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, you know, it kind of explains everything as far as guitar-related, the logo, and, uh, you know, my YouTube channel. So hopefully these are going to be a nice shirt and not be a crappy print and I can make them available to you guys at a much more affordable price than the other ones were. So that's just another thing I've been doing and uh, yeah let's get back to the guitar. So I like when somebody puts up a comment and then retracts that comment when they find out that they kind of put their foot up their own ass. This one says sorry to say this but you ain't a luthier until you can actually build a guitar from scratch. You basically a guitar tech at best. I've actually built two guitars from scratch, but no way would I call myself a luthier. So, you know, I gave him a thumbs up, gave him some love, and then posted my own comment after his. So my comment was, a luthier is a craftsman who builds or repairs string instruments that have a neck and a sound box, which is true. Uh, if you look up what a luthier is, you build and repair. The words build or repair, I may have not done any scratch builds yet, but I have sure done a lot of repairs and refinishing, restoring. I have most of the tools to start building, just not all of them. I don't mind being called a tech as long as you don't call me Terry 3Gs. Also, don't be sorry. And then he retract his comment after I posted my own. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start polishing these frets. They don't need any leveling. They don't need any recrowning or anything. They're good. They're not, nothing's wrong with them. They're not bad in any way. Whatever was a little bit high, I ended up popping them down a little bit with the fret hammer. And uh, it's all good. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab some tape. Because this is where it's going to get a little bit messy. Now I'm using the fret erasers to polish these frets. I'm going to do each fret one by one at a time, get as close to the fret as possible with your tape, and this will help from, you know, this shit happening, I don't know if you can see that right there or not, but that is basically rubbing compound or whatever they used to polish these frets last time got into the fretboard, I'm hoping that comes out. So I'm using my fret erasers, starting off with the one that's a little bit more aggressive, and I like to get around the whole fret, not just the top of the fret. You'll see some people using the fret eraser like this, and that's just scarring the top of it. I like to get it around the sides of the whole fret and give it a decent polish all the way around. That way, when you polish it up with the uh, rubbing compounds or whatever type of cleaner that you're using to polish with, they come out nice and shiny all the way around, not just on the tops. So that's all I need is just a little bit of rubbing like that. I'm using the Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish, which works pretty damn nice with this. I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit to this rag. Get the stick on there a little bit. Don't need a lot. Just rub it in really good. I could use a Dremel right now, but I really don't feel like it. That's going to make a mess all over the back wall over here, and I have... A bunch of parts over there that are for other guitars that I really don't want to get, make a mess on top of them. And that's it. So I'm going to go and hit the next one using the same tape, getting up close to the fret itself, not overlapping on top of the fret, but just getting all the way up between the fretboard and the fret itself. Move that off to the side.
right, so you can kind of see a difference already between this is where I stopped at, this is the last one that I ended up polishing. You can kind of see a difference in how shiny they are. Now, all this shit here, this remnants of white that you see in the fretboard, that's due to somebody polishing these frets without covering the fretboard up, which is kind of a no-no. The reason being is, well, if you take a look at the black shit, the oxidation that it comes off when you're using the chrome polish on the frets, that also gets inside the fretboard if you don't cover up your fretboard. And then I'll start leaving your fingers a little bit on the black side because um, it's basically just putting the dirt right into the wood grain itself. That's why I always cover up the fretboard, never polish my frets without anything protecting the wood. All right, so each fret has been sanded with the fret erasers and polished out with the Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish, which works pretty good on, on this fret wire for polishing. It works good on a lot of different types of metals as far as polishing it out and turning it into a nice shiny surface, pretty much like chrome. I like the way the frets feel. You know, the strings, if you ever do any bends on there, you should just slide real easy over these frets and not have any problems with grabbing or... Uh, Sometimes when, well, I've seen frets that have been leveled and crowned and supposedly polished, and the fret looks good and stuff, but when you get up really close to the fret, especially if you wear glasses for doing things close up, you'll see like maybe a dull line on one corner or the whole top of the fret has got a dull line on it. That's because the fret hasn't been polished properly. And that dull line basically are scratches. You go to do a fret bend and you could probably feel that on like the high E string. But in this case, shouldn't have any of that problems. So now I want to get rid of all this white crap that is inside of the fretboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting a little bit of the Dunlop fretboard 65 lemon oil on here. Now, after polishing the frets, you know, this is what comes off of the fret when you polish them. Now, if you don't protect the fretboard, you're basically pushing that black into the fretboard itself and getting it into the grain of the wood. When you start playing the guitar, you end up with black fingers. Not fun. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this to a rag. I kind of I don't like these little. I don't like these little damn cotton ball things that they put on the top of these because you can't get into the lower part of the fretboard. So what I end up doing is there's a push button on here. I squeeze the bottle a little bit, get some oil on the rag, and I'll end up doing this manually with a rag. Now I'm going to put it on a little bit heavy and try to get as close and up personal to that fret as possible to see if I can get that crap that's in that fretboard out of the fretboard. I don't have any simple green, which simple green will dry out the wood, and uh, but that'll help me with getting rid of that shit that's inside the fretboard from whoever polished it last, the frets last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put this on a little bit on the heavy side. I don't know when this was ever oiled, and I'm going to use a small toothbrush in the areas where I see the white still and uh, see if I can remove remove that crap from the inside of the fretboard. It looks like shit. And if you're going to do something for yourself or you're going to do something for somebody else, you know, you want to make sure that you do a good job, take your time, don't rush it. Um, Make sure you pay attention to every little detail that you could possibly de pay attention to. Like, if you're going to oil the fretboard, make sure you get up close to the nut. You know, you don't want to sit there and have a light spot in that area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit probably overnight. And I'm going to wet it again. And then clean up those marks, like I said, with a small toothbrush. Get that shit because I can still see it in there and I'm not liking what I'm seeing. So the next video that I'm going to make for this will be the completion and finishing up of this guitar. Uh, I still want to, after I get the fretboard completely where I want it, 
I want to do a body polish on this thing. Uh, I noticed that the nut on the three-way switch is loose. That's kind of why it's a little bit on the sideways instead of up and down. Um, and some people like it a little bit on the angle because of the angle that they're playing the guitar. I kind of like them the way Gibson sets them and that's it. Makes it a lot easier, especially if you're used to playing a Gibson guitar and uh, every other guitar is basically based off of, you know, a Les Paul is basically based off of that what Gibson's been doing. That's why Gibson's having a shit fit about Dean or whatever copying their bodies and shit like that. But I like to have the switch kind of matching with the other guitars that I have. That way, if I ever flip the switch really quick, I know exactly where that switch is going to be. And if it's going to be on an angle, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult, especially when you're used to it being up and down. So I'm going to take care of that too. I'm probably going to have to take the pickup out in order to get my hand up inside there to make sure this stays put while I use the, the nut tightener for this to get that thing in place and locked down. So thanks for watching, guys. And it's been kind of a long video. And uh, yeah. The next one's probably going to be even longer. So stay tuned for that, and I'll catch up with you guys all later.